Hey everybody, welcome back to The Elegant Oxford. I just want to start this video off by thanking all of you wholeheartedly for your patience, since I know I haven't posted a video in a while. Many of you have noticed and have messaged me since I have been missing in action, basically. And uh, due to the fact that I haven't been posting on Facebook, Instagram, or on YouTube, and there's actually a very good reason why. As many of you might already know, my wife and I recently welcomed a new baby boy into the family, and uh, truth be told, we had a little bit of a tough pregnancy for the last three months. And uh, after our son was born, we spent a couple of nights in the hospital. And uh, because of that, I had to take some personal time and take care of family matters until our son was born, until everything was just back to normal. So Zidane Emerson Soto was born on April 28th, 2021, and my wife and I could not be happier. Zelda is ecstatic with her little brother, and uh, she's just so fascinated by this new baby in the family. And uh, t Juan and I are just so grateful for all of you who have sent us emails and letters and have reached out to congratulate us. We truly thank you for your goodness towards us. Now that we're back on track, the Elegant Oxford will continue as normal. I have some exciting stuff lined up for the channel and some delayed but great reviews coming up that I know you'll all love. Thank you all again for your help and your support during this time. It means the world to us. Let's get this video started. Welcome to the Elegant Oxford. We specialize and offer premium shoe shines, dyes, and artisan patinas for quality men's brands and help others to learn the art of shoe shining. Visit theeleganoxford.com for all of your shoe care and Saphir Madai Dior needs. Welcome back to The Elegant Oxford for another entry in our review series where I unbox, review, and recommend brands I believe are worth your consideration. Today we're looking at one of my absolute favorite brands and that is TLB Majorca. Now I've looked at a lot of amazing brands so far in the review series across a variety of price ranges so I hope nobody here thinks I'm being pejorative in making healthy comparisons because other brands I've looked at do offer unique and worthwhile entries you can't find anywhere else but by and large. TLB represents one of the best, if not the best, price to quality ratio in this particular range and at this cost. Last time we looked at TLB, I reviewed the 110 Wingtip Oxford from the Artista line, which I absolutely loved. So if you haven't seen that review, I left a link in the description of this video. Today we're looking at the main entry line with another special guest appearance from the Artista line so we can look at the differences between both and look at what they offer. Now, as always, TLB has a minimalist aesthetic. It's just a black shoe box, black shoe bags, and the company logo, and that's because the true prize is on the inside. Like I've mentioned in probably every other video in the review series, I always love when companies include two shoe bags. I don't like one large shoe bag. I know that's kind of me complaining, but I really do like having individual shoe bags for storage and to protect the shoes, so that's something I always like to see. All right, let's begin with the Orson, which is a Balmoral Oxford boot from the main line. So this is not from the Artista line. This is from the main line, which is more affordable. Now let's start off with one of my favorite parts of this special makeup that I ordered, and that's the dark brown museum calfskin. For those who are unfamiliar with museum calf, it is a drum dyed leather, meaning it's tanned from the factory this way with this intricate and stunning marbling design, which I absolutely love. It looks so regal and rich, but still completely classy since I'm aware that patinas are not everyone's cup of tea. I love dark brown museum the best, although it comes in different shades like burgundy and light brown, which also look unbelievable. It recently came into some serious popularity and I really don't see it going away anytime soon. It just looks that great. The Orson is a Balmoral Oxford boot, which means it features a seam that runs to the back of the boot here, which separates the lower of the boot from the shaft. For a shoe or a boot to qualify as a Balmoral, it must have this horizontal seam as opposed to Oxford boots, which look very similar but don't qualify as proper Balmorals. Not trying to be pedantic here, it's just some info for those who are wondering. In the United States, however, the term is often used interchangeably. Alright, there's some nice broguing along the seam, which gives the Orson some nice flair and versatility overall. This is actually a pretty, pretty versatile boot. You can wear it with pretty much anything, within reason. Uh, the boots feature eight eyelets with two speed hooks, although if you opt for a custom boot like I did, you can actually change the number all the way to four, which I think is great, because I know some people really prefer speed hooks. We have an elegant swan neck design also, which is my personal favorite on Oxfords, and I'm really loving it on these boots as well. The Orson is a cap toe boot with broguing along 
along the front seam and a very beautiful and intricate toe medallion that is also interchangeable to your liking as part of the custom option with TLD. So I decided on this less than comment variant, which I think looks really great on this style. If you opt for a custom design, you can choose your toe medallion and even what type of leather you get. So I decided on brown museum calf. These particular boots are built on the Allen last, but as I've already mentioned, a custom boot will allow you to alter the last if you'd like, which is, I think, a great option. It's just a really beautiful last overall with an elongated yet classic design and a soft chiseled toe with some beautiful raised contours here at the front. It's really just a stunning looking boot which rides a fine line between elegant and bad boy if I'm being honest. Everything looks perfectly stitched and clean so I'm really impressed with just how good the work is here. Now let's head downward and as always TLB has hit it out of the park with very smooth and clean edges with rounded waists that transition to stark flat edges, giving the shape of, of the shoe a modest flare here from the waist to the forefront. Very solid and missed by a lot of brands, but it really accentuates the proportions of the shoe and leads the eye forward to the front. I absolutely love this little flare here, kind of a, a mini spade sole. So I always love seeing that on shoes. It, it looks really regal and really makes the shoe look, uh, it really improves the line. So I just think it's great to have. We have a good eight stitches per inch, which is very, very impressive. That's high quality work and, and pretty good welt fudging. I like how it looks. It's pronounced and deep, um, but we'll make a comparison with the Artista line in a bit, and you'll get to see how those two lines differ, among other things. So that's coming up in a sec. All right, we have JR soles, which I think are pretty much the standard on a well-built shoe nowadays. And this is another option for those who go custom with TLB. Now, if a custom option only gave you JR soles, it would still be worth it. But you can also get to really customize your shoe all included for the same price. So it's absolutely worth it in my book. Now, I went ahead and had my friend John Farrington at Tim's Shoe Repair at Brass Triumph Toe Plates. But I know TLB also offers Lulu Toe Plates if you inquire about it. So it's an option for anyone who likes them. I think since the toe pretty much wears out before any part of the sole, toe plates are absolutely necessary in my book. Now, here's where the Artista line and the Normal line differ. The main entry line features about a 2.5 inch waist, while the Artista line features around a 2 inch waist with more aggressive beveling. Even still, a two and a half inch waist is very narrow and very impressive. I mean, I, I really wish I could just show you how small that is, but two and a half inches is very fine work. I guess this is the only time in your life where smaller is better. Uh, work like this is simply not found at this price range, so TLB is an excellent way to afford quality work and find details like these, even in the main line. Okay, now here is a side-by-side -side comparison. We have the Artista line on the left, and then the main line on the right. So you can see both feature really slim and beveled waist, but the Artista line does feature a, a much more slim and, and a much more beveled waist. Both are fantastic. Both are much better than what you get from pretty much anyone at this price point. So there you go. Now the 135 split toe derby from the Artista line I chose also comes in dark brown museum calf like the boots. But Tony was kind and generous enough to send me a pair in a beautiful burgundy shade to look at and compare. So thank you, Tony, for that. Now, I've never been a fan of split toe derbies. I'll just say that right now. But as time has gone on, I've started to really appreciate them for what they are. I'd say it's accurate to admit that split toe derbies aren't as popular as more mainstream styles like Oxford's. But I've noticed how versatile they can truly be dressed up or down. And now I'm a huge fan of them. They aren't as formal as Oxford's and are less threatening due to their conspicuous nature and design, which is really desirable in certain situations where you don't want your shoes to be too loud or stark, for lack of a better phrase. Now, for those who don't know what a split toe derby is, and that's totally fine, this seam that runs down the front of the toe area here is what designates the split for which the shoe is named after. Sometimes they're called Norwegian toes because some people believe this style originated there. As you can see, this particular seam was done using reverse skin stitching, which humorously enough means exactly how it sounds. This seam is formed because you are seeing the reverse side of the stitched seam. It's a unique look that gives the shoe an added element of sophistication and aesthetic appeal. Now, as I've alluded to already, this leather flap that goes over the top of the vamp is called the apron, and on the 135, this area of the shoe is actually sewn by hand, which is really amazing, and it's very solid work. Everything looks perfectly stitched and even. It's just another added area of fine shoemaking, which always makes me happy.
The Velasquez last is elegant and forward-thinking, but it's tastefully contoured in just the right areas with an almond-shaped toe to really make this derby stand out from the rest. I know this probably goes without saying, but for those who are not familiar with what makes a derby different than an Oxford, this open lacing system as opposed to closed lacing gives the shoe a less formal paradigm to work with, but that's not a bad thing at all. I think it's really up to the wearer to determine which is appropriate for the circumstance. Sometimes Oxfords are just not the right call. Remember, Intelligent dressers know that standing out in a bad way is never a good idea. Clothing and shoes are merely tools for you to use. Don't let the tools end up calling the shots. Okay, let's head down to the welt and edges, which are built to the same great standard as usual. Fine, amazing work. Now with the Artista line, we get an impressive nine stitches per inch and very purposeful and clean and deep welt fudging. And with the main line, you get eight stitches per inch and the fudging doesn't look as deep or as purposeful, but it still looks great. So that's the difference between the main line and the Artista line right here. Here's the two inch beveled waist, which I think is one of the main selling points of the Artista line. The beveling continues fully under the heel for added support, which is a feature you don't see until you really get high into the upper echelons of shoemaking. Like with the Orson, I opted for double JR soles and they're closed channel stitched. Uh, really fine, really clean work. If you opt for a single oak, the beveling does look more pronounced and uh, a little bit more contoured. The, the double oak really doesn't allow you to see it as, as well, but it's, it's really fine work. Two inches is super, super thin. You should just measure that out on your own time and, and you'll realize how almost ridiculously skinny that is. It's just really great work. Now, since I opted for a custom design, which is only slightly more expensive, both models from the Artista and the main line feature museum calf. Thus, I really cannot speak to the differences in leather quality between the lines. Uh, but since I always recommend a custom design with TLB anyway, you can choose whatever leather type you'd like, uh, including museum calf, old English, uh, Vigano, your sole type, JR soles or rubber soles, single or double oak the last, the toe medallion, or you can even mix and match to get suede and leather designs that look really beautiful like this. Uh, totally worth going custom, you know, it's just a little bit more extra. And since JR soles usually go for about $120 to resole anyway, you're getting all of that plus a custom shoe for less than just a resole what a resole would cost. So totally worth in my opinion, and that's why I usually do that anyway. All right. Let's give these shoes a nice shine and then I can give you my final thoughts on them. I absolutely love these. Now, I know I've aroused some discontent with some members of the shoe community since I contend that TLB competes with brands at a much higher price point and I continue to stand by that assessment since TLB includes certain details and elements into their design that, in my opinion, are required for quality shoemaking that more expensive brands might omit. Now, I don't want to be misunderstood. I'm not saying that TLB is better than all brands at a higher price point. That's not what I've said, and that seems to be a misunderstanding incorrectly attributed to me on some forums going around at the moment. What I am saying is that TLB is a really capable competitor since some very popular name brands that cost double or triple the price do not offer double or triple the quality over TLB. Although they do offer higher quality in some areas like leather grades, but in other areas of design, despite the price increase, TLB absolutely dominates them. For example, $1,000 to $1,200 will get you better and higher quality leather on your shoe, but is slightly higher quality leather worth triple the cost? That's a question only you can answer. I just want to make sure that we can have an open and honest discussion about what constitutes a well-made quality shoe in relation to cost in today's market. TLP is no slouch here either though. They offer excellent full grain calf skins from world renowned tanneries and moreover their museum calf is sourced from the exact same place. Many high end name brands source theirs. I guess ultimately my point is that leather quality isn't really the issue at hand here. The heart of my argument is, are you getting an adequate return for that triple cost of the shoe? Especially considering that some brands in this higher cost range do not offer fine details that TLB includes, like a two inch beveled waist. Fine details like that should really be standard on any shoe that costs around a thousand dollars in my opinion. As shoes get more expensive, you'll see a diminishing return on your investment, meaning shoes that cost $1,200 may not necessarily offer much higher quality than a good $850 shoe. I'm generalizing, of course, as an example. 
which leads me to continue to argue that TLB is one of the best price to quality ratios out there. $400 to $500 will really get you far here. If you're going to be spending $1,000 plus, you should probably aim for a hand wilted shoe with a fiddle back waist. I wouldn't settle for a Goodyear wilted shoe for $1,200 that doesn't even have at minimum a beveled waist at this price point. Of course, you're totally free to disagree. I have no problem with a different view. This is just my argument in favor of the aforementioned. I'm wearing the 135 with tan cream chinos and olive green socks, although dark wash jeans and olive green are also really great colors that go with this. So just use your imagination and look to earth tones to really complement the shoes. I'm going to be wearing the boots with a navy blue suit and a white shirt. So I'm also going to be looking toward complementary colors and earth tones, orange and brown look really great with this. So I think it's safe to say that you can use your imagination and find those shades and colors that match and complement the boots in your entire ensemble. Hopefully you liked the video. I uh, really had a great time reviewing these two. These are some of the best that I've looked at so far. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, and share for more content in the future. Visit theelegantoxford.com if you'd like to purchase any of the shoe products you've seen me use. Make sure to check out my other videos as well if you'd like to learn more about the art of the shoe shine. Don't forget to look for me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Elegant Oxford. Remember to care for your shoes so they'll last you for years to come. Always put your best foot forward. The small details matter most, so don't forget to hashtag shine your shoes. I'll see you next time.